Thank you, Dr. Vakar. May I now request uh, Dr. Khalid to please come and give his talk on the cannulation techniques. Ready? Yes. Okay. So I think uh, I won't speak. I don't have that much energy like my uh, older colleagues, so I won't speak that long. And uh, it will be quick and sweet. Uh, with uh, regard to, it's just, uh, uh, I'm, I'll be talking about the cannulation techniques. And uh, uh, what I usually, uh, when I uh, give this uh, uh, talk or when I teach uh, my fellows, I just tell them, like, every papilla is a different. Uh, every papilla you have to approach differently. So you have to become a papologist, like a study of uh, papilla itself. Whenever you go, uh, get to the papilla, you get into the position, just don't get your cannula, don't get your sphincter tome and start banging on the papilla. Sit there for 30 seconds, see what the papilla looks like, have an imagination in your head, where is gonna be the bile duct, which way it's gonna go, how, what is the upper portion, which way your cannula should be directing, which way is the uh, pancreatic orifice. We always teach about this 11 o'clock position, one to two o'clock position, but it really doesn't work in every case. Every single patient is a different thing, uh, patient, and every single papilla is a different papilla. So no one technique fits all situations. And uh, with regard to the cannulation technique, you can uh, now we, uh, mostly we do a, what we call a wire guided technique. And, uh, or you can do a gentle injection. And as I said, sometimes if uh, I'm not sure, like uh, if I'm really, if I'm uh, um, into the orifice, but I'm not sure if it's going in the pancreatic direction or the biliary direction, I just inject sometimes myself just to make sure where I am. And uh, with regard to wire guided technique, just keep in mind wire guided technique is really a wire guided technique. That's not an injection wire guided technique. So that is just with the uh, wire. So with regard to axioms of can on cannulation, uh, I see, uh, I get these refer our ERCP sometimes, like they say, uh, uh, they say like uh, it failed because the papilla was too small or the papilla hole was too small. Really there is no uh, uh, too big of a uh, uh, papillary orifice or too small. But with regard to successful cannulation, uh, you cannot push hard on the papilla. Don't distort it. You cannot like Pushing never works in ERCP, and for that matter, in any endoscopy, it never works. We all struggle, and the tendency is like when you st you're struggling, you're losing your patience, you're trying to just beat up on that. You, to be a good endoscopist and to be a good ERCPist, you have to be patient. You cannot just uh, keep pushing on that. And it really, cannulation itself, it just boils down to your axis and egg angle. And if you are distorting the papilla, just stop. Take a deep breath, start over. So just don't keep uh, uh, distorting it. And sometimes if you are really having a trouble getting into the bile duct uh, cannulation and to get a selective bile duct cannulation, uh, tipping up, and just changes the direction, changes the angle of the wire, and it just goes in. And uh, not, it's not like just trying to advance again. It's pushing, not, try, uh, not trying to advance the catheter. It's just the angle itself. That's what's going to work. So different tools, I think uh, I'm sure uh, all of those are available here. Sphincter tomes are available, uh, standard cannulas, and uh, 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 tapered cannulas. with. Yeah, 
yeah in this setup uh, we do a lot of pancreatic work so for that we usually start with the pep uh, uh, it's a tapered cannula it's 543 cannula that's not a regular cannula it's even a much smaller than that so f that's mainly for the pancreatic work but uh, i agree like uh, most of the time if you are going to do a biliary work it's going to be a sphincter tome and uh, we talked a little bit about the guide wire cannulation I put a needle knife on there, but it really is, you should not be even thinking about using a needle knife. And uh, uh, so that's, uh, you can take that out of your list. Uh, there are different sequences, and uh, some, uh, one of the uh, sequence uh, which usually used to happen, and uh, most people would do that uh, previously, few, uh, 15, 20 years ago, you inject first and then put the guide wire through that. Uh, Nowadays, we what uh, mostly what I do, and I think uh, 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 Dr. Wakar and Dr. Saad probably they would uh, do the same way. Is the uh, what we call a uh, uh, seat the catheter and advance the guide wire, or I use uh, sometimes the tip of the guide wire to get in, and then I seat the cannula or seat the sphincter tome, and then push the wire. I have videos of that, so I'll show that. Uh, uh, as well. So these are the uh, really uh, uh, different uh, uh, sequences and sometimes uh, just seed the guide wire, advance the guide wire while adjusting the angle of the, uh, I, I put the catheter, uh, but it's mainly a sphincter tome, uh, obviously. So again, many times what happens, papilla is kind of a floppy, you can get in, you can engage yourself, but it's not going anywhere. If it's not going anywhere, it's again, pushing is not gonna work. It's just the matter of right angle. As soon as you get the right angle, it's just gonna go in. So these are the major uh, uh, different uh, 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 anatomies of that. And there are uh, some, uh, uh, those uh, uh, images of that. Most of the time, you're gonna find this a very small uh, common channel and the biliary orifice, as soon as you go in, biliary orifice is above that and the pancreatic is below. Sometimes you keep, you find a very nice opening, you engage in there, but you keep ending up in the pancreas every time. And you're like, I have tried every single angle and it's not working. Come out of that opening, take a deep breath. Maybe there is a second opening. Sometimes there are two separate openings bile duct opening is separate and the pancreas opening is separate. So that may be the case. Other times it's a very long common channel and when you go in you, uh, and if you're not getting into the right directions and you inject a little bit that can give you an idea and then you have to just change your uh, uh, angle, uh, bow your sphincter tome uh, to get the uh, right angle there. So these are the uh, some examples of a, a very a straight shot uh, uh, papilla. Uh, uh, these are the most common ones you are going to see. Uh, those are usually the successful ERCPs. Most of the time when you fail uh, uh, your cannulation, there are different uh, reasons for that. One is uh, what they call uh, Sharpe papilla. Does anybody know what Sharpe is? It's a Chinese dog. I'll show you a picture of that. It looks like a towel just folded on each other. And that's like a papilla with the, uh, like very, uh, a lot of folds uh, 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 of uh, uh, um, uh, mucosa. And then uh, up and over papilla is another reason for uh, failed cannulation and uh, aberrant relationship. You, anybody knows what that means? What that really mean is like uh, where you s suspect the uh, biliary orifice should be, it's not really there, they are kind of inverted. You rarely find that as well. And uh, so the biliary orifice is down and at one o'clock and the pancreatic is on the other side. So you will find those type of cases and I talked about separate opening and obviously periampillary diverticulum, there's some distortion of anatomy Sometimes they are the easiest cases, and other times they are really, really hard cases. It really depends and, uh, uh, on your luck that day, I guess. So you see that? That's really a dog, not a towel there. 
So that's how the papilla, these papilla can look like that. So this is called Sharpe papilla. In these cases, when you get in, you engage, pushing is never gonna work. You have to engage. Uh, we, uh, I don't know if we will get a case like that or not. You go in, sometimes you have to inject to get the idea which way the bile duct is going. And here, you engage, you bow your sphincter tome and pull it out to straighten it. Pull it out, don't push it in. That's how you're gonna get straightened and get into that type of papilla. Uh, this is uh, a, an example of uh, up and over papilla with a twist or a bulge. Here, the papilla itself looks it's pretty straightforward and really nothing much, but when you go in, you keep hitting the wall. You don't go in, it's the papilla in here, it goes up and then kind of have a bump or a hump. It has to go over that. That's called the uh, up and over. So here is a, a cartoon for that. You go in and if you keep going in this direction, you are gonna keep hitting here. You're gonna keep hitting here. You go in, in this case, instead of bowing it further, you may have to release the bow to straighten it and then again pull it towards you. So this is an example of up and uh, uh, over uh, 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 papilla. So here is another this, uh, uh, picture of uh, uh, that. You can see that it's going up and then coming down, right? That they both like the uh, pancreatic orifice as well as the biliary orifices are like that. So you go in here. If you, you straighten the, your uh, sphincter tome a little bit, and then you have to pull the scope back to get into that angle so you can get over that hump. So this is not the perfect example of uh, up and over, but you can see how the uh, papilla it looks like. This is kind of that uh, uh, anatomy. You go in, it goes in very smoothly, easily, no problem whatsoever. You inject, it kind of going a little bit, goes in and then it kind of, the contrast goes right there. So here, the same, per you have to straighten your uh, 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 sphincter tome and then go in uh, uh, with the Y with that. So this is an uh, uh, example of uh, normal anatomy, biliary orifice is here, pancreatic is here, but here, if you see the biliary orifice is on the side where you uh, uh, expect a pancreatic orifice to be, and that's called the uh, uh, aberrant this, orientation. This one really, you only find out when you've done a, a cut uh, to really see the aberrant. It only becomes obvious when you've actually done that and you realize uh -huh, there's one opening going this way and the other is that, and the one actually takes you to pancreatic. Other, yeah, other thing is like you struggled for 30 minutes and you're still not able to get in and then you realize, okay, maybe it's uh, some other place or it's a different, again, yeah, mostly uh, uh, when after you have to cut, but uh, in this particular case, it was like after you have struggled in for 20 minutes and you have tried every single angle for the biliary orifice and it's not working, so there is, has to be something wrong, either with you, uh, myself or with the patient. Uh, or it's uh, some uh, unusual. So here, didn't have to cut before. And uh, uh, just it's uh, trying a different angle and different uh, uh, place and it does work. Okay. So these are two completely separate openings. You see that it's completely intact pancreatic orifice and the biliary is far away from that. So these are the, uh, these as I said could be very, very easy ones. Uh, sometimes and other times like you are struggling through that. I think this is an example of easy one. So you see here, uh, can you turn these lights off? Or? Yeah, this is bad enough. So here, this is all big diverticulum. You see the pep, uh, 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 papilla is right inside the diverticulum. Here, angle of the bile duct, if you look at more carefully, it looks like uh, uh, the bile is coming from that, 
angle looks like of the bile duct is going to be like this way. So you, if you pay attention, you get that idea. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, my uh, teacher and my partner, Dr. Haas, says you have to have a sixth sense sometimes to get the idea which way you have to go. Because it's, uh, it's, you're not going to sometimes know, but you have to have the sixth sense. Just imagine by looking at the anatomy, looking at those folds, like this is the this is the way where the bile duct should go, and that's it here. I by look, in most of the cases, how you can actually visualize it. Here, you yeah. can. You yes. go in yes. and you yes. see yes. that. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that has to be the angle of the yeah. bile duct, especially with the diverticuli. Yes, yeah, I absolutely agree that you can visualize. So I'm gonna just play. It's a very it. This prob uh, This was a very easy cannulation. You just touch it. You see the wire tip of the wire. As soon as uh, you go in, and then after that you lift it, and it just goes straight in there. So this is uh, one of those very uh, easy, uh, the diverticulum makes your life easy. But at other times, it makes it uh, really hard. When it's facing the other way, the other side, that's when you have Yes. It'll, ca it'll be coming. It'll be coming. <laughs> so here, this is uh, actually a, another one. This is completely inside the diverticulum, far away. And it's a very small papilla. And after you go in, the wire is not going in anywhere. It just keeps hitting. So that's why I injected to get an idea where it is. So after I got the uh, idea uh, where it is, go in. Like you are trying to maneuver your wire. Sometimes. I do the wire myself too. And the way I do is like, uh, uh, I, uh, sometimes if you uh, take your glove off and rotate the wire, it's just a rotation and it just like, it's like a snake. Sometimes it finds its own way and goes in. Here, it wasn't working. So that's why I injected to get an idea. So if I go back on there, when you inject, it, it comes back the contrast and then goes up. So that means like I'm, going away from the uh, uh, angle of the bile duct, so I have to come back while engaging the papilla itself. So I'll, you go in, you hook your sphincter tome in there and with the wire, and then you pull it back. Sometimes you have to pull the whole wire back into the sphincter tome, uh, because if the wire is inside, you're, not, you're still in the wrong position. You're never gonna get into the straight position. So the wire has to come back while you are still engaged with the papilla. The sphincter comb tip is still in, but wire has to come back completely. You bow and you pull the sphincter comb towards you and that kind of straightens. This is exactly what was the example in this one. Okay. So this is what- Quite what often it's actually pulling back which takes you in. Yes. And that's what's being emphasized. It's not always about it vanity. And most of the time, yeah, that's the case. You back, and as you pull back, you quite often you just get it. But you have to bring, yeah, you have to bring the wire back. That's the point is, if the wire in the sphincterdome is in the wrong place, and you keep the wire in and you pull the sphincterdome, it won't work. Because you'll go back again to the same thing. So when you bring the wire back, the wire actually quite often will, as you come back, you actually go into the right. I think if you look at some of the classical old teaching, is that when you uh, engage your cannula in, you exert a slight pull on the spoke, and then you push it your cannula up into the seat. Yeah, yeah. That, it, it, that's one, and then either many times you have to really get close to the papilla, sometimes you even have to lose the view of the papilla itself to get into the bile duct. So it's yeah. like every single you papilla is different. All the, all the different all, like, all the different, uh, it's like every single, I cannot stress enough, do not start just hitting the papilla as, as soon as you see. Just take your time. In your case, take a minute, take a minute and a half. Just have a plan how you are going to start your uh, uh, cannulation. Without a plan, do not just start beating up on it. More you beat up on it, more risk of complication. Long, it's going to take you much longer to get in. More, uh, there is a risk of uh, if you are doing an injection, you are putting the injection in the wrong, wrong place. You can cause a submucosal injection, and more time passes, you lose patience. You lose patience, more frustrated you get, and the difficult it becomes. 
I have seen people many, sometimes like those who do this all the time, when they know they are getting frustrated, they leave the scope for a minute and just stand there, get out, take a deep breath, come back and start over. So just, it's gonna happen when you start doing more of this, more difficult cases are gonna come to you, and, but you have to have a patience. You cannot be a good and the safe endoscopist if you don't have a patience. When I, I do the same thing except that I don't take too many deep breaths, but I go and I pray. I will read some. And I pray to Allah and then I go back. Yes. For those 30 seconds that I actually can uh, yeah. and come back. And then quite often I feel relaxed anyway. And with the blessings of the creator in this game. Yeah, when I give a lecture in United States, I have to. Yeah, you can't say that, but I can say it. <laughs> no, that is so true, to be honest with you. Like, uh, 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 whatever you believe in, it's whatever, whatever, you whatever you believe in. It's in. Yeah. the creator. And then you go and ask him, what does it say? say that you do yoga or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, here, before I start this video, this is one of those, like, even though diverticulum is uh, there, you see, looks like papilla is right there. And it's a very distorted anatomy right above that. So this is when you start seeing this type of papilla, then again, you start taking deep breaths from the very beginning. <laughs> so I'll start this video. So here, I'm not even touching the papilla. Did you guys see? I'm trying to get an idea what I have to do and how I can bring this papilla uh, towards me and get that into the right position. It's just every time I try to do, I'm trying to do something with it, I'm trying to get an idea where I have to touch. I still have not touched the papilla itself. You see, I'm scratching around with, uh, uh, and this is the first time I think I got into the right position to touch it, and I use, I'm using a wire, but still, every time I touch with the wire, it just moves away from me. So then I'm gonna stop there. You see something here? This one? What is that? And why is that? Yes, after struggling for a little while, then I mean, like it's not where every time I touch this papilla, it goes back. Every time you touch it, it goes away from you. In spite of trying to push the forwards uh, and trying to get an advantage of that time when it comes to you, Still, it's not working, so I have to put two clips to completely move those folds uh, and fix, to some extent, fix the papilla in a position so I can work on that. Khalid, in fact, in a situation similar to that, uh, what I've done is injected some saline to that side and then pushes it towards you. That is a, 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 you can do yes. that as well. Yeah. And uh, the only thing is, like, if you're injecting and uh, just making a submucosal injection very close to that, yeah. if you inject a little farther away, yes. that may be able to push that. Yeah, absolutely, you can do that. Uh, I've, I've actually not done either of them so far. And what happens is that because clips are uh, expensive, so it's, it, the clips is great. Um, I, uh, but if you keep trying, um, you can bring a position where if you have enough experience then you are quite, but it takes longer. What they are saying is that you can actually shorten that if you have these two modalities. Uh, we've actually published our experience in the and then yeah. fortunately we've not had to do this. And in fact, uh, cases like the one that you see. Um, but then it obviously takes much longer. And so it's, it's about knowing that you have two modalities. I think the saline thing is great, except that I'm not too, I'm a little concerned about where exactly do you inject? You have to do it right away from it because number one, you don't want to distort the tongue itself. Yeah. So what it does is when you then inject you inside it out, to the diverticulum. Yeah, then you put it in, inside the diverticulum. Inside the diverticulum. Suddenly it goes in. Yeah, it's like so it has to be on the back. It's what it has to be on the back side and there. Like, I've done that. it a few times and it does bring it closer. In fact, in those cases, you would not actually visualize the papilla itself. When we injected say that it brought it out to the yeah. Uh, so my, my only apprehension. But I, I quite like the yeah. clip technique as well because it's actually yeah. sort of you know, without disrupting the uh, 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 anything the and uh, yeah. Bring it out. So it's a my, my only concern, concern. Is that if you're injecting into a diverticulum, you know that the diverticulum is going to be 
much thinner. So you have to really be very experienced and careful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, I, I personally would probably not do that because I'm, I'm a chicken. So, but so you've got two modalities. Yeah, other thing is like uh, here, they have one other point of stress, like uh, if you notice, the pillar itself still does not look like anybody has beaten up on that. It looks very like uh, still, in spite of spending quite a bit of time, the only thing which has touched this pillar is the wire so far. So you have to like uh, be very mindful about that. Yes. So here. Now I have, now you can see it's kind of more f uh, on uh, uh, and fast to, to more towards me so I can uh, uh, work on that. And here again, I'm just using the tip of the wire and now I got engaged with the, uh, this uh, 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 opening. And as soon as uh, that is, then I'm just trying to gently, very, very gently push and, and there you go. And look at that. This is not a submucosal injection. This is the normal anatomy of it. Nothing. It's like just all folds on there. Okay. And you see the pepe, uh, uh, that uh, uh, clip on the x-ray as well. And again, still not injected, you, just with the wire. If I can just mention something. You see all the scopes are straight. Positions are great. And that's what you have to do. Most of the time when you're struggling, you will not have this thing. You've got long scopes, typical position, amplifies away, trying to can away from that distance, none of that here. In all the cases we've seen so far, even the most difficult ones, and you see he brought it to the right thing. And position and position and position. Position and position. I never, I would say we like uh, we all uh, those who do that, I never touch the papella, touch with anything until my position is correct. So you struggle. You, if you have to struggle, struggle to get the right position. Don't struggle to handle it. Struggle to get the correct position. Yeah, it's, a, it's a natural tendency, especially when you're doing starting or doing less. It's, let's go. We've got the papilla. It's not coming. I don't forget it. Just try and chill it again. You know, the whole thing is there. You know, huh. so if you're, what you're doing is not, not something that we've all attempted at time. But with experience, you've learned that, that that's counterproductive. So you really need to have it as well positioned as you can, and then life becomes much easier. Okay. So this is another one. It's uh, you, uh, you see, uh, I call it ampulla facing away. So here, this is all that uh, 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 ampulla itself, but the opening is at the bottom, and it's facing away. This was a case, uh, it was filled uh, uh, cannulation from outside. And uh, here, one thing I kept doing, I had to do it a few times, like push on the top of it to bring the opening towards me. Keep pushing, keep pushing until uh, there's less peristalsis and you have enough time that the opening is facing you and you can touch it and get in here. So here, Again, I'm not touching the opening until I know that I got the right shot. I have time to take the shot, and that's when I would touch it. So that's what I hear. I'm going to start it over right there. So here, just trying to see where the opening is, trying to bring it towards you. This was a, even getting into a position. They told me that was very difficult, and it was. Just getting into the position was difficult as well. So here. Very long stinker tone and engage with it. Now stop there. So, what would you do here? It's a position, it's, you cannot stay it. It's the same <coughs> position, patient, and not me, like that. So, it's, you cannot get underneath the papilla. That's what's this way. Can you move this way or no? No, you cannot. You cannot. This is the best position you got there. What are you going to do? You are engaged there. You have a tip of the uh, sphincter comb right in there. What would you do here? It's very reduced scope already. To relax the sphincter comb with the 
you can you do a little bit, it will relax. Here, you can't, you can't use the right left, you see. Yeah, yeah, it's not giving you a right position. Again, it's a different, completely. Uh, uh, so here, sphincter bone is engaged. Here. Back a little bit and go back and the So what you, well, you're going to see here, I'm engaged here into that opening. It's not going away. I know that it's in there. So what I would do is like I'm going to bow the sphincter tone. When you bow the sphincter tone while doing the same, keep pulling on the sphincter tone. Not just scope is going to stay, everything is going to stay in the same place here. But I think, Carl, even in this case, uh, initially when you were sort of trying to bring it up, it might be again a good case for putting hemoplates on. It did not have it, yeah, but it didn't that. take me long. Right. So it just literally yes. did not take me long. I was like, I'm going to try this if that yes. doesn't work. I can uh, get the, the heel clips on, on, uh, top. on the top and just uh, attach to the upper wall. But it did not take long with this one. As soon as I got engaged uh, uh, into the opening, and uh, that's what you see here. You see how it's coming? I'm going the finger home and pulling towards me, and just it just finds its way. Nothing is being pushed in. Everything, it's just, I'm pulling it out. And now, uh, injecting there, because the wire was still not going, but it was in a good position, got that, and then just the wire goes in there. You see the stone in there, too. Okay. Here, you can do a big sphincterotomy. There's a lot of space in there. Okay. How do you define a big and a small we can uh, talk about that. Now I guess what they call it a walk around me. I do play the gender sphincterotomies. Because I, I only do one size sphincterotomy. Yeah, which is complete sphincterotomy. Yeah, yeah. 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 and yeah. 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 most of the cases is going to be fit for that. But depending on, we can talk about that. If you know that you have to do a sphincteroplasty, they should describe a pathic, they have to do remake. If we do sphincteroplasty, this is a debate I have. We've now got enough experience to say that really, and this is a discussion I had with somebody from Pratt. And this, we discussed this about sphincteroplasty, I think, this is So this is uh, the, the video, video I can not put into the uh, box. So I have to bring up the video separately. So this is, uh, I think it is a wire guided cannulation. Okay. Here. You see, I, I, have you noticed that uh, pretty much in all those videos, pretty much all of those, I had this tip of wire off. So what that does is, like that helps me in, uh, go into the opening, the orifice, without traumatizing the papilla itself. That's why I, I like to use the tip of the wire if I could. And uh, that's, what I, that's why you keep seeing all that. You see, you have to sometimes lose the view to, to get into that right direction. Here, yeah, after getting in there, there it is. Okay. So if you are in the right direction, in of bile duct, you will go straight into the bile. When you move the bile, when it starts going in from here, as soon as the wire goes up to this point, stop there. Don't, like especially you have to train your text, do not push very fast beyond that. In the case, if you are in the pancreatic orifice, and the wire is big, and you are in the side branch, you can perforate the side branch. So as soon as you get into the line, from there, I tell them to, they, what they do is they slow down and move it slowly up in there. As long as you know that you are in the duct, not going to fall out. Because many times the angle looks like you are uh, into the wire that's going up, and you just want to push the wire, you are in, you are just, uh, uh, you are excited. But you could be in the pancreatic uh, duct, there could be a, a, a loop, and a loop, it could go into the side branch, and here we use the bigger wires most of the time. So you just have to be very gentle and very careful. Pancreas sometimes is very unforgiving. So you have to, uh, it's a very, very delicate organ. You have to uh, treat it with respect.
where did my presentation go? Did I, I think, cross off? So this is another example of we see this all the time. Uh, is there a video there or no? No, doesn't look like it. Yeah, I think uh, that's the problem it was given me before. I'll, I think I can show the videos in a little bit. Uh, I will go back and show all the other videos later. So uh, this is a, an uh, other type of uh, papilla. You see here, uh, I could not find any example, live examples. So it's kind of uh, uh, drawn out. Uh, usually, this is the normal is the violet is here, pancreatica orbis is below this line. Sometimes what we call a plaster septum. So the, uh, here the septum, the common septum, that comes all the way out, all the way very close to the rim itself. And the building orifice is kind of over there. So you keep going into this area without realizing the septum and the upper wall of the papilla, they are kind of plastered together. So sometimes looking very closely, you can get that idea if you keep uh, getting into the pancreas and not able to get uh, the, uh, into the bile duct. So just pay attention to that. Yeah, why, why technique really works in these? Yes, wire technique, you can separate with the wire itself, but a septum uh, from the upper wall, and that's uh, uh, it, it works really well. Uh, what to do if uh, stented techniques fail? You can uh, place a guide wire or a, a small uh, stent into the pancreatic duct, and uh, you can use. Uh, we have uh, uh, these are available uh, torque or curve tip wires. They usually help you uh, 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 get into the right angle, and uh, you can use a double wire technique. What that does is uh, Japanese use all the time, and. Uh, uh, you put a wire, you keep going into the pancreas, it's kind of a floppy papilla, you leave the wire there. And what that does is that kind of straightens the papilla for you. And you can uh, get it uh, uh, in alignment of that. And you can get into the uh, bile duct with the uh, second wire. Uh, then if uh, 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 everything fails, you can do a access sphincterotomy or pre-cut sphincterotomy. I think I'm not, I have videos on that. I'm not gonna show those. And uh, because I don't think you, uh, at this level, uh, you should be doing a pre-cut, uh, really. But you do need to know how to place a pancreatic stent. Uh, this is that video of that uh, uh, sphincterotomy. But it, uh, whenever you get to that level, uh, I, I always, if I'm doing a freehand sphincterotomy, I uh, pre-cut, I always want a pancreatic stent first. Uh, what that does is, this is, I'm not talking about the uh, big stone sitting at the end line where you can cut with a uh, uh, needle knife and stone falls out. I'm not talking about the pancreatic cancer patients. These are the patients I'm talking about, those who are high risk post-ERCP. Uh, patients are high risk complication patients. In those, I would like to and I would want to have a pancreatic stent before I do a pre cut. So, you need to know how to uh, 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 put a pancreatic stent. And what, what does, why I'm so adamant about that, that you have to have a pancreatic stent in those patients, what it, 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 it just provides you a direction of the cut. You know which way the pancreatic orifice is, you, you can, it gives you an idea which way to cut it. And uh, it uh, gives you a platform uh, to limit the uh, depth of the cut and it uh, stabilizes your needle knife. And for any reason, for any reason, something goes wrong during the ERCP, as least your pancreas is protected because that's what we worry the most. If it starts bleeding, your pancreas is uh, 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 safe. If patients start jumping off the bed, not enough sedation, your pancreas is safe patient starts bleeding, your pancreas is safe. So that's why I'm pretty adamant about that. Like, 
unless, as I mentioned, few uh, indications like organic cancer are infected, stone, rice, and ampulla. All these, uh, you should not do a pre-cut uh, sphincterotomy without putting up a get extent. I just get aggravated by that because I do get cases like that and where they have tried the pre-cut. And I, I wanted, really wanted to show a video. Uh, I just did a, a like re, a day before the, when I came, I did a, uh, a case which was uh, a freehand uh, a needle knife and ampulla uh, was in the diverticulum. And uh, I wanted to call uh, the person and tell him, oh, you, by the way, you didn't do a deep enough fistula artery because pre-cut was nowhere close to the ankle. And I'm uh, like, uh, and it's all like, it's a very tiny, uh, small ampulla behind the fold. I really have to, uh, I'll be honest with you, I could not get in. I gave it to Haas, he could not get in. So I brought, I got that patient, got the patient admitted, and uh, then uh, I did uh, next day. I did it myself again, and uh, I was I was planning to do EUS guided in that particular case because it was a, such a bad knee, uh, like needle knife, I, you could not see, and you know, papilla has to be there. The, the guy who did us uh, pre cut, he at least you got uh, like I was, you give a little bit credit. At least he politely did it in the right place if he's been doing it. So, and uh, I see the vial, I still can't see the opening. And it's not there, vial is not coming from where the cut is. So I cleaned the whole vial, uh, I filled the diverticulums, two diverticulums, with water. I sat there for two minutes looking for fresh vial to come out of the diverticulum. And then it gave me an idea, fresh bile is coming from the back wall somewhere. And it's not where the peak pad is. So then you start flipping it up, using your sphincter tone, flipping it up, and I see the papilla. After I found the papillary orifice, literally it was 20 seconds to count. So like, don't do a pre-cut without a and we, we have this experience with yeah, so because we get a lot of these needle knives done by people who are not trained, who are not good, and the needle knives are nowhere near where they should be. Um, it makes life very difficult for me because I'm starting with something that's totally messed up. And quite often the ampulla is actually literally um, just completely away from where the cut is. Um, I'm bad, I take a picture, and I usually in fact, three cases I've actually took a picture. He is like done inadequately, incorrectly, uh, and then gone on and reported. I don't think it's fair, but I get I got really frustrated because they it's harmful to the patient. It makes it very difficult for me sometimes. So I think the point here is other uh, uh, than made is that if you're not good at something, doesn't mean that you will <coughs> not be good. You're not good at it now. At this stage, it's not correct thing to do. It doesn't mean you can't ever do it. It's just that you need to be at that stage. The other important thing, Carl, is about needle knife to be around it, is that we just we were just three of us were discussing. You need to have a certain level, and what I'll make this point, you need to have a certain level of cannulation success. If you start doing needle knife and you've not achieved those that cannulation so you never achieve. And when you present your data or you are audited, you will be shocked because your cannulation success will be so low, people will say, well, what the hell are you doing? Do you really know how to cannulate? And, and so I think it's important to achieve that international level of cannulation before you even embark or think about doing things. I, what, I, uh, I, what I teach my fellows, we take to advanced fellows every year who have done their uh, regular fellowship. I tell them, <clears throat> the day I have to use needle knife, I feel like I don't know how to do it. That's how I feel, literally. And I think people who use needle knife quite often, they don't know the technique of medicine. That's why they use it. To say, uh, uh, say something else, if you, your cannulation success rate is not above 90 to 95%, like with a regular, without needle knife, you should never catch them. So you need to be a master in uh, uh, yes, the technique cannulation before you get to the needle knife.
And uh, I think uh, here the cannulation rate is 97% or something like that. That's sort of part of the high end. Our cannulation rate is 98.6 last year, or 1,200 ERCPs. And only probably, I think, a needle knife was used in uh, uh, 10 to 15 cases, something like that. And uh, so but that's, I strongly believe people who use needle knife quite often. And you see these. Uh, Experts are so far experts. They have published hundreds and hundreds of papers. They go to these live international endoscopy every single time. They have to use a needle knife. There are so many of them, and uh, but uh, then they they are presenting like it's a difficult case. It's not a difficult case. You need to go back and uh, just uh, look at this. So this is a, a case and a, another cannulation uh, case of a uh, pancreatic mass. Many, many times those are going to be so easy to get through. Like you just go in and you're just through the mass. Other times it's going to be difficult. Those are tight strictures and there are kind of zigzag uh, 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 path in there. So you, here you see the cannulation very easy. You just go in, no problem whatsoever. But when you inject, uh, you, when you can't get the wire in there, and then you, uh, you inject a little bit of contrast, you see here it's going like this, and then goes up. And uh, so here, that's why I'm like wondering why the wire is not going in. I'm in the right place, my channel is perfect, and then I inject a little contrast to get the idea, like maybe I'm not uh, in the right place, or, uh, uh, or something is wrong, maybe I'm a PD. And you see, it's a very, very coarse. And in this case, <coughs> then after I get an idea, I'm in the right place, I just got to get through that. You see how the, uh, this, this is? It was coming down. So here, I'm going to stop it again. You see the wire is bending on it. The tip of the wire is very soft. Sometimes if it starts bending, that's a good thing. Maybe you want to take it, let it keep bending, and it will find its way. Here, that, uh, and sometimes it's not going to work. Here, it's not working. The wire keeps bending there, even though I'm in the right place. So when that happens, the wire just, it doesn't take one U-turn and it doesn't go up that if it keeps kind of circling, like having a, a zigzag path in the same area, don't keep pushing that. That means now you need to straighten the wire. Okay, so here in this case, so after that doesn't work, bending, then uh, uh, I straighten the wire. And now it takes a turn right After straightening it, it's just a little curve and goes up in there. It's something that we have slightly different experience with is because we are reusing extracity, so your sphincter tones, after a certain use, their tips become uh, you know, not as, as smooth as they are when you're using first time. You will find it a little bit more difficult. So, if you're reusing things, I think the wire guiding technique is excellent. Again, we are reusing the wires. So, the wires are not like the way the, the new wire goes. Uh, when you've used the wire 10 times, the wire is totally different. So, you know, those are the things that you'll have to learn and practice with. Uh, we achieved reasonably good success with, with what we use. So, I think it is doable, but obviously not as good as if you use the new wire. For the course, you will get uh, good accessories, new accessories, so you're okay. But maybe in your practice, you, I don't get it either. Okay. So here, here is the capilla, right? And you see the orifice right there. This is the camera I was talking about. We usually we use quite a bit. So here, what do you think? Where is the angle of the bioduct? Which what should be the direction uh, of the cannulation? Should it be this way, this way, this way, or this way? Which one? This? This? Okay, that's uh, that's what the shape uh, like. It looks like bile is going this way. What about the pancreatic one? Right here. We all agree. Okay. So here, for pancreatic, uh, when you have to really decide pancreatic cannulation, uh, I have noticed many times. Uh, 
like in very short position may not work the best. A very straight position. It's a, a semi-long position. Gives you a beautiful angle at the pancreatic orifice. If that's what you are going after, it's a semi-long position, and that gives you a beautiful angle right into the direction of the PD itself. So this is a desired uh, uh, cannulation uh, of, the, and here, if you notice, uh, became a little dark. It doesn't, didn't even show the wire. Okay, maybe the next one. <coughs> so it's the same case. You see the wire going in. It's going in smoothly. And where is that wire now? It's not in the dark, right? doesn't look like, but it went very smoothly in there. And I don't see a contrast in there. So if I keep pushing there, I'm going to end up. So either it's a dorsal duct itself, which likely is the case, or it's one of the side branches. So when that happens, stop there. Why do you stop pushing? OK? So here, then you bring the wire back. Right. And you see a little uh, answer loop in there. So as soon as you traverse that, it just goes through. And uh, after that, this is that uh, uh, stent uh, we were talking about. It's a four French stent, the Boston New Stent. It has two marks. It has a mark at the end, and it has a mark right before the tail as well. So you don't have to put a mark with the marker itself. So it already had. It's a, is this the same one? Because it just had the, I mean, they just bought the new stents. Uh, they just showed that they have marked it. This is a new material they're using. Yeah. Which is a green blue stent. Is it the same thing? It's a kind of a. Uh, uh, they just marked it a green bluish color. Totally different color to anything that I've seen before. No, this and is the, the color you have. Yeah, I don't but know. The but the material they're using now for the banker extents is totally different. <coughs> Much more slippery. Um, I'll ask them to show those stents. Uh, I've not used them. So they look really, just to look at them, they're beautiful. They, our material is the same. I don't know if it's a greenish color. This is the color what they have. So yeah, it's the. So yeah. I'll just show you. Okay. Uh, I'll have to take a look at the stents, really. I think uh, you see the uh, mark on there? Uh, yeah, the ra radiation mark, anyway. So this is the other mark, which is outside. And here, I was earlier talking about, like, yeah, there is a, 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 a separate technique to put that stent to the uh, you see this mark right here? This is a, that's where the pigtail stops. So as soon as I see that, you see how the papilla is away from me? You really have to move away from the papilla. And after that, completely release the elevator. Not use it. Don't use it. Because every time you use the elevator, it pushes the stent in there. So here, and you can push it in without using an elevator. It's not going to, you see that now? Uh, I usually uh, try to see the tip of it a little bit when the stent comes out. Okay. I think uh, that's, uh, I just, uh, that's pretty much it. I have other, a lot of, uh, some other videos for simple and I think we can talk about that some other time. Yes. I'll stop there and take a question. Any questions? Masters of cannulation. Khaled, there's a question. Dullah. Every time you use a spiral hiding technique instead of a string or a wire, as soon as you enter it, you know, your wire, and then you advance the wire first, you see that the then you advance the string or a wire. Yes, you have to connect to the wire that it means like a, a just you use a wire. You advance the wire that is going in very smoothly. The main purpose is that, uh, like the in and you're trying to figure out make sure you're in the depth before you push the sphincter off. There are two ways. Either you find the depth with the you like the contrast, or the like you find the depth with the wide itself. Because you don't want to push a bigger sphincter tone without uh, being in the depth. So you get the wide deep in here and 
uh, ideally we yeah. end up having um, sometimes the 12 cases that we have to finish in the morning and then it's just like a conveyor belt which is not not the way we should be doing it. When we have time, we can do much better job. So I think one of the things that, that we can learn from our colleagues uh, from overseas is that um, you know you need to allocate proper time. It's not about doing more, it's about doing safely, comfortably and, and enjoyably.